Today, I'm going to review Orion's new Observer 90mm Refractor Telescope. Is it any good? Is it a worthy replacement to the AstroView? Stay tuned and we'll see. So this is Orion's brand new 90mm Observer Telescope. It replaces the AstroView uh, that came before it. It's not just a minor tweak. It's a pretty different scope. There's one thing I'm really excited about, and that is they now put the scope on a Vixen rail. Now that means a couple of things. One, that means you can use the optical tube on other mounts that support Vixen rails, which is a lot of them. And it also means that you can put other optical tubes on this mount. And that's something I really like. As a matter of fact, the Skyview, not to be confused with the Skyview Pro, but the this is the Observer, then they had the Astroview before it, then they had the Skyview before it. And the Skyview I actually have behind me, and I adapted it to put a clamp on it for a Vixen rail, because uh, I, I just love that ability. So I'm very excited about that. There are a few things I'm not so excited about, um, and let's cover those real quick. Plastic. Plastic. Cheesy. All plastic. Plastic, plastic, plastic. No name brand eyepieces. More plastic. No more hole in the cap. Shorter. Hard, smooth plastic. No more rubber tips. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You, you're thinking that I harp an awful lot on the use of plastic. Lots of telescopes these days have plastic. That's true to a point, but there are a few things that are kind of important. For example, the ring that goes around the optical tube that holds it to the clamp is plastic, okay? This piece is plastic. That piece is what clamps down with a metal screw. So the problem here is this, all of this plastic right here is constantly under tension. Even when you take the telescope tube off and store it somewhere, if the clamp's still on it, this plastic is under tension. Plastic does not do real well under tension for extended periods of time. So that kind of scares me. Another thing is plastic in the diagonal is a problem because this is a metal screw going through a plastic threaded ring. So when you put your metal eyepiece in there and then tighten this metal screw in this plastic, if you're not extremely careful at all times and you turn it just a little too much, it will strip out. As a matter of fact, most of the old ones are all stripped. Not necessarily because someone grabbed it and just really tweaked on it, but simply because metal through plastic to metal over and over again, you get the point. The other problem is it's not just the diagonal. We can very easily replace the diagonal and they're not that expensive. The end of the focuser, that's a plastic ring with metal threads just like this. So. If you're not exceedingly careful when you put it in there, you'll strip those out. Once they're stripped out, you know, if this guy strips out, so what? You know, you set it down in there, okay, fine. But if the ones in the focuser strip out, what's gonna happen is you're going to, yeah, that's a problem. I also don't like the massive use of plastic in places like the focuser where it makes it, there's so much plastic that it makes it unsmooth. Uh, I kind of like a smooth focuser. 
So once again, you're probably coming back to, well, that's how they keep the price down, but they really don't. The uh, Celestron Astro Master, I believe it's called, 90 millimeter EQ, is basically this scope, except it's got the old style mount, like the Astro View from Orion, two weights instead of just the one for this one, which gives you more capability to carry a wider variety of loads on the mount. It has a red dot finder, which I far prefer, especially for beginners. And it has real Celestron eyepieces. You add all of that up and you're like, okay, well, maybe it's a slightly better scope. Slightly better? True. But it's also a slightly, potentially slightly better scope at about $40 less. So I have been a huge proponent of the Astro View, which preceded this one. I think I'm about to switch over to a Celestron for my uh, recommended beginner refractor telescope. Now, all of that being said, this is not a bad scope. It really isn't. I'm disappointed in a lot of the decisions they made, but it is functionally still a pretty good scope. The views you get in it are, are pretty good. Uh, I don't really have a problem with that. And speaking of that, let's go outside and take a look at how this assembly actually works. So here we are outside getting ready to observe um, with our Orion Observer 90 millimeter refractor telescope. And outside I want to talk about actually using the scope. Now, uh, previously I've talked about some of the stuff I did and didn't like. Um, and it's almost impossible to talk about this telescope without talking about how it performs compared to its predecessor. So there's going to be a lot of that in here. Sorry. Overall, the telescope works pretty well. The tripod, the mount, and everything is pretty stable. Um, I'm kind of shocked that it's not more stable considering how beefy this mount is. So I'm not really sure whether that's a knock against this mount or praise for the previous mount, but it is no more or less stable than the previous mount, although it looks a little bulkier. That doesn't surprise me because it's actually lighter than the previous setup. Anyway, so using this telescope, the slow motion controls uh, work exactly as you would expect. Um, they are a little tighter than I would like, but I imagine that will loosen up with, with use, but they are still a little tighter than most telescopes, um, and I, I'm not a big fan of that. Both of them are that way, although this one's a little looser, and that one's a little tighter, but I imagine they will loosen up pretty good. Um, the optics are, are pretty good. I've used it a couple of nights, um, mainly on the moon, uh, because these refractors do really well on that, and it, it has put up some pretty good images. Um, haven't had too many problems with it. Getting everything lined up uh, was fairly simple. I do like the fact that you can adjust both the front and the rear of this uh, finder scope. That makes dialing it in just right really easy. The other style would work and, and did fine, but this is a little nicer to, to deal with. The focuser down here uh, has a little bit it's not as smooth as I would expect. It has a little bit of gear feel to it. You can hear it, you can feel it just kind of ding, 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 ding over. Um, but it does rack in and out fairly smoothly as far as the eye is concerned. When you're looking through it, it's, it's relatively smooth. And it does allow for fairly uh, minor adjustments to get it just right into focus. So that's nice. Um, I made mention in, previously that the coatings uh, I didn't really think there were any coatings, honestly, but I'm not really seeing that being detrimental, at least on the few targets that I've, I've used this on so far. It really hasn't seemed to be a problem. Um, stability's good. The height's okay. It's a little shorter than the Astro View that it replaces, um, but it's still high enough to, to get by um, with what I'm doing. The locks... Uh, seem nice and sturdy. Once you lock it down, it does well. 
It doesn't take a whole lot to unlock it, to let it move. Once it's unlocked, the motion is nice and smooth and feels tight. So that's, that's really nice. Overall, uh, it's a nice scope to use. I have had uh, no real issues with it viewing. It does a pretty good job. Balancing the scope is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. I don't really have any, any qualms with it. This scope balances out fairly nice. If anything, the mount is a little stiffer than I'd like in every respect. So balancing it takes more of a feel rather than just letting it go. But you can fairly easily get it balanced, get it set up, and get it going. Before I let you go, there's a couple of things I want to mention. The first is um, the stability of the entire assembly. When you extend it up to maximum height, unlike its two predecessors, this thing tends to bow the legs. This is exacerbated if you're on a smooth surface, polished concrete, even a smooth deck, uh, or inside, because the tips, since they are hard plastic and do no longer have the little rubber tips on them, the tips slide, which makes the problem even worse. So I wasn't real thrilled with that. And I really, really wanted to like the telescope because I love the two previous versions and still own them to this day but I wound up returning this one. And the things that really got me to that point were I didn't like the massive use of plastic, but I could survive that. But the uh, smoothness or lack thereof of the focuser was a serious problem for me. The inability to replace the finder scope with a red dot easily was a real problem for me. And the end-all, beat-all was the plastic focuser with the metal screws going through it that I knew dang good and well were going to strip. And so I just said, no, nah, I'll, I'll do something else. So this is one of the very, very few uh, telescopes I ever returned to the manufacturer. Uh, but on the good side, Orion was excellent in the return. Uh, they didn't even ask why. They were very friendly, very helpful. And I got it shipped back for next to nothing on pretty much their dime. Um, they were real good. So one of the things I do like about recommending Orion is that uh, they stand behind their stuff and their customer service, if you bought from them, is usually very, very good. Sorry about the telescope, but customer service was excellent. And I hope this helps. Clear skies.